Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego. Review those amazing bricks and plastic and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's build on it. Welcome in, everybody, to another fabulous episode, episode number 186. Today, we are talking all things that are up and coming and new and exciting, and we are going super duper in depth with a very new first time guest to the show. This is going to be interesting. If you really like in-depth stuff, you're really going to appreciate this episode today. So without further ado, let's jump in to this in-depth discussion with our secret guest. Well, guys, today I'm joined by a special guest, somebody you've never heard of, at least here, (laughs) probably on YouTube, found your way to YouTube and you've gotten into the Lego, you know, bubble You've definitely found this gent, and uh, David from Solid Brick Studios is here to talk with us today about something that I really don't have a background for. David, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you, sir. Uh, happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me on. So I brought you on. I, I had talked to you a few weeks ago about doing a collaboration, something Star Wars-esque, because <laughs> definitely not my realm at all. And, and listeners mm-hmm. will know I don't know anything about Star Wars or not near enough to get a deep dive into it. So today we're going to talk about a few of the, the things that are coming. And as you're hearing this, it is news to everybody. But some of the others that have already come out that you've actually already done videos on. So you guys will be able to check out those links to David's videos in the show notes. Yeah. So David, let's talk about a few of the Star Wars things. Where do you want to lead off? Uh, so right now there will be, I guess, six or seven sets unveiled, um, from Lego. They should all be up on the Lego website. I think only the bad batch shuttle is available for pre-order and the rest all just say coming soon on shop at home. But, uh, the summer wave of Lego Star Wars sets is very interesting this year. It is the, I believe it's the first time in like probably at least seven years where we've gotten an entire Lego Star Wars wave of just television show sets. Nothing is based off the movies, excluding the uh, the Darth Vader chamber, which is kind of like an outliner outlier uh, set on the side that's kind of part of this wave. Uh, but everything else is based off either the Mandalorian, the Bad Batch, or the Clone Wars television show. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> um, I have not caught up with any of that. <laughs> so <laughs> let's I know I know I know uh let's let's start with the Mandalorian stuff the Mandalorian stuff mm-hmm. was actually really cool I do have the uh the Mandalorian ship I can't remember the Razor Crest the Razor Crest yeah I do have that okay but that was last that was last year yes the rest of this stuff let's talk about the Mandalorian stuff that is uh currently out there for everybody to check out so the, the the biggest set of the wave is a Mandalorian set. It's a hundred and sixty dollars. It's called the Imperial Light Cruiser. Uh, the fan community thought it would be called Moff Gideon's Cruiser, and you know, just I'm gonna try to not talk spoilers for the Mandalorian season two in case some of your audience hasn't seen it. Uh, there's some big things that happen in that season, uh, but. The Imperial Light Cruiser is a ship that showed up in the second season of the show quite often. It is the main villain. Moff Gideon is his name. Um, it's the main villain's main ship. It's kind of like Darth Vader's you know, Star Destroyer or whatever. Um, and uh, it, it's a pretty good looking set. It comes with a lot of characters from the show. Uh, the highlight character is a new figure called the Dark Trooper. I know a lot of Lego Star Wars fans were very excited to get that. Uh, it, it's got a new helmet mold. It kind of uses this new armor piece, and that's definitely a, a really cool figure. There's a, a bounty hunter called Finnick in the uh, in the set as well, and that is also another interesting figure because it has arm printing. And um, up until this year, 2021, arm printing on Lego Star Wars figures is a rarity. It almost never happens. Uh, the very few times it does happen, it's almost always figures and an Ultimate Collector Series set. So I believe like in an Imperial Star Destroyer, we got like arm printed 
um, Imperial officer. Uh, I believe, I don't know what year it was, like 2016, 2017, Slave 1, Boba Fett Slave 1, that had uh, the Boba Fett minifigure had arm printing there. So it's very rare. It's always something in, in the higher price sets. But up until this year, um, they, they kind of changed that. And so I think three or four minifigures out of this new Lego Star Wars wave has arm printing, which is a, a big change that I think a lot of fans are going to be shocked by and also really happy. I got to admit, the the figures for the, the Mandalorian stuff is, has turned into some really cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Much Not that the other original Star Wars stuff is not good, or not well done. It's mm-hmm. just really nice to have different characters. And this ship looks, this looks massive, dude. This, this is a pretty large ship. Is it not? It's a, it's a sizable ship. It's a, so, you know, $160. I think it's like 1300 pieces. I have reviewed it as, as when we're doing this podcast, I've already reviewed it. And I really like the set. I do think it's a little pricey. I, I kind of wish it was more in that 130 to 150 dollar price bracket than 160 but i mean lego lego released an atat that was around the same piece count uh last year and you know that has been very successful so i don't think the piece count is really going to keep fans from buying it at that 160 dollar price personally you know i would say you know wait wait it out amazon likes to discount this stuff pretty fast (laughs) um So wait out for that. If if you're not like immediately drawn to the set and you're like, okay, well, you know, that looks cool, but you know, maybe I'll wait, you know, I would recommend that. But anyhow, continuing on the set, uh, it also comes with the Mandalorian, Baby Yoda, Moff Gideon, um, and Cara Dune. Cara Dune was a, a kind of a surprise uh, figure. She, she is in the season two of the show, but uh, due to some controversial things with the actual actress, uh, a lot of people thought that figure would be removed from the light cruiser, but it wasn't. Um, so it's there. And so I think that'll actually please a lot of fans. Uh, so the mini figures are definitely the highlight of the cruiser. The cruiser itself is large. It's nice looking. It's accurate looking. I did find that there was only like one main play function, kind of two, but the the real main one is that you can shoot out a little mini, or actually it's a micro TIE fighter out of the front of it, uh, which is really neat. Um, and then the little micro TIE fighters are actually stored on the side of the ship uh, on the ex- ex- exterior. And uh, I actually really like that feature, but I do think that they could have done more with it. There was only like one big interior with like a, a like a table inside of it. You know, it, it's just okay in that regard. I think they could have added another room or two or added another play function. But the look and the figures are absolutely there. And I think that's just enough for, for fans to go out and buy it probably day one. You had mentioned that there's 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 a lot to it. Mm-hmm. If there was anything that you were going to add to it based on its price point and stuff like that, what, what would you have preferred to see on it as well? Uh, so again, without going into spoilers for the show there, I would like <laughs> there have, I like, I would like to have, <laughs> I would have liked there to be a prison cell that that was kind of a thing that you saw on the ship quite, uh, quite a lot in the episodes. And then the other thing is you see these dark troopers, which are basically these, these uh, robotic androids in the, in, in the Mandalorian, um, you see them kind of literally launch out of this ship, uh, and it looks awesome in the show. And I wish Lego had included just like a sliding door just for the dark trooper to just like drop out of the bottom when you're holding onto it. Like that would have been awesome. And it wouldn't have been hard uh, to implement that feature. You know, in my review, I kind of speculated that maybe the designers didn't know about that scene in the in the show. And so they weren't privy to it. And so they didn't include the feature because that happens a lot with with these type of Lego Star Wars sets where if it's based off of a movie or a or TV show property, especially a live action one, they're not always privy to exactly what happens in the scene. So sometimes you get discolored vehicles or functions that don't make sense or vehicles that don't even show up in the movie because they cut it out during the editing process. So, you know, I'll give, I'll give the designers wiggle room there as to why those features weren't included, but you know, that that's what I would have liked to see. That's, that is a very good point because at the end of the day, this stuff is being created well in advance and yeah. they're only going based on the content that they're given from in this case disney right to be able to determine what is what and yeah that that's always one of those things and i'm sure the designers have been like yeah man that'd have been cool if we could have done this after watching an episode or something mm-hmm. like that so very cool uh let's move on to this next one here i i find this one kind of fascinating but i'm having some difficulty as far as trying to understand the scale of this thing. So it is the Imperial Armored uh, Marauder. Yes. 
So this is a $40 set here in the U S just under 500 pieces. Talk to me a little bit about this thing. So this is again, another Mandalorian season two, uh, vehicle that shows up in the show pretty prevalently for an entire episode. Actually. Um, it's actually in a very exciting episode. One of the better ones out of the season. Uh, so I know a lot of fans will probably gravitate it to it just because of the episode it shows up. So basically it's a, it's an Imperial vehicle. It's an armored tank. Basically uh, it's something like you would see out of rogue one from that star Wars movie. It comes with two stormtroopers, two regular stormtroopers. Interesting enough. They don't, the Lego loves to use the, the clone trooper face or the Lex Luthor face on stormtroopers and clone troopers. But um, these two regular stormtroopers actually have a female face and a male face that are completely new to these stormtroopers, which I thought was a, you know, it's, it's something so small, but I really like that. It, it, it kind of changes it up because that actually reflects what the stormtroopers actually are. So that was nice to see. And then the, I guess the highlight minifigure would be this mortar or artillery stormtrooper. It's like basically the fans like to call it the mustard trooper because it's yellow. Um, <laughs> it's got a it's mortar It's pretty cannon. cool though. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks awesome. Like I, I, I could just see Star Wars fans just gravitating to that set for that figure alone. Um, and then the last figure is Grief Karga, I believe. And it's also a new version. You actually have him. He's in the uh, Razorcrest set, but this is a new iteration of that figure. It's always good to get new, new figs or, or a new iteration of a fig. I I got to tell you, I'm smitten by the uh, the mustard stormtrooper. <laughs> uh, there's there's something about it. It's just different, and yeah. I yeah I can see that being something that somebody's like, oh, I I definitely need this. Kind of like you, mm-hmm. um, Cara Dune in in the last uh, set. That that's going to be something people are after. Mm-hmm. This is going to be the same for me. Absolutely. So I think the figure selection, four figures, forty dollars, pretty solid, uh, pretty solid set. Especially given the fact you're getting two new exclusive minifigures in the set, so that's appealing. The set itself, I think, is is actually very nice. It has a lot of functions, a lot of doors open. There's little hidden things. Um, it's a little difficult to get in the middle of the set. Like there's most most Star Wars sets, you can lift the entire roof off, or even like even like Lego City cars, you can lift off the entire roof. Um, that isn't the case with this. You actually have this little um little hatch area and it's kind of difficult to get a minifigure in there so that's like probably my biggest gripe with it i think other fans really particular fans will be upset that it's dark gray instead of light gray it it very (laughs) much so is a light gray in the show and there there's a combination of the two colors in this set it definitely skews dark gray more um and so i can see fans getting upset by that but i can get over that because it it is a very nice well-built set and It stores all four minifigures. You can't always say that about Lego Star Wars sets is that can you actually put all the the minifigures it comes with in the set itself? That's not always the case. And this one, it is. Um, It's also kind of an army builder set in a way. For fans who would want to collect this, you know, there's appeal to buying more because you want more mustard troopers or you want to build a little (laughs) imperial army with these guys. So I think it's a good set. It's a fair value. Well, and you touch on that about the, the the certain figs and stuff like that that people go after. And I like that this price point is at a $40 price point because f- for that figure, for that reason. Mm-hmm. And Lego has definitely changed their thinking in regard to, you know, certain figures not necessarily being in the super high dollar sets where they've mm-hmm. kind of pushed them down to a lower dollar value or lower valued set so that people can do that. And I know that is something that star Wars was kind of in the forefront of to a certain degree. Absolutely. And everybody else has kind of jumped in. I'm thinking like, especially like Ninjago it used to be where you would have this one certain character from a season and it would be in the $120 set. And people were like, <laughs> seriously, you know, it, it was, it was a killer. So I really like that that is the case. And I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, no, it is. That, that's been a reoccurring thing, actually, with this wave is like almost every single set that comes out in this wave has a brand new and exclusive minifigure at every price bracket there is, uh, which is really appealing for Star Wars fans. On one end, that makes you want to buy all the sets because they all have different minifigures and they're all exclusive to those sets. But on another, if you just have a certain budget, you are still getting new figures at a lower price point that are only in those sets. See? See, folks? Lego listens. They, they do. They have they have heard the gripes and they they have acted. So it's always a good good thing. Uh, moving along, not too fast, of course, but 
This next one here, I, I've, I'm in love with this. Now I know you and I had talked prior to this about mm-hmm. the, the name change mm-hmm. of this. Um, it is called the Boba Fett Starship mm-hmm. at a $50 price tag. It was previously called Slave One. Obviously in the, the current culture that we live in, things change. Mm-hmm. So I am smitten by this because it's not a UCS. It is actually something that I would want to play with and, and kind of have a smaller version of. So tell me about this one, man. I I really like it. Uh, first off, it was originally rumored that it would be uh, just like based off episode five of Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, where it would be, you know, the, the ship that you see in that, which is Han Solo kind of in carbonite and Han Solo going on the ship and all that. And then Boba Fett. It was ori- originally rumored to be that type of style of set, but instead they actually switched it over to be a Mandalorian season two set. And what's really cool about that is that you're getting a brand new Boba Fett minifigure that is based off that second season, and it looks so good. It's, again, another figure with arm printing. Um, now, you're also getting the Mandalorian, the the Mandalorian figure, uh, and he also has arm printing, but we got that figure in an earlier set this year. Uh, so you're getting that figure again, and also in the light cruiser. So he's just popping up everywhere. He's like the new... I guess the new like Obi-Wan or Anakin that always pops up in every other okay. set uh, or Luke Skywalker, <laughs> I should say. Um, so we're getting, we're getting those two figures. The highlight for the set is definitely that Boba Fett. It looks so good. I absolutely love that figure, but the set itself, it's a, it's a, what I consider a mid scale set. So earlier this year in 2021, in the winter wave, we got an X-Wing, a TIE fighter, an Imperial shuttle. All of them are smaller than their previous iterations from other waves. Um, and they're smaller to meet a lower price point for newer Lego Star Wars fans. And the TIE fighter, it looks weird. In my opinion, the X-Wing is okay. It's actually pretty sizable. And then the Imperial shuttle is a little, I'm a little mixed about those. But the Slave 1, which continues on that trend of a smaller version of, of, of a Star Wars ship at a lower price point, is, is probably the best out of the four now, in my opinion. The Slave 1 so detailed, and it has a lot of, a lot of things going on for it, and I, I really like that. Uh, one thing that's kind of crazy, there's actually a little pop-up handle, just like the 20th anniversary version of the set. There's a little handle on the back so you can hold it and fly it around, just like how you see it in the show and movies. So that's really nice. Uh, but then they also included, I don't know why, but they included this little um, speeder, speeder with a ladder. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it, it I was act- wondering what it was for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of ingenious, actually. So people are going to wonder, like, okay, you can only fit Boba Fett in the, in the ship itself. But where does the Mandalorian go? And so they made this little speeder for him to ride, which I think is hilarious. It's totally not accurate to the movie <laughs> or to the show. And uh, I absolutely just laughed when I saw this on the set. Uh, but it actually uh, does double duty. So it's a, it's a little speeder for the Mandalorian to ride on for the kids. But it actually also acts as a display stand. Uh, the way it kind of leans on the ladder in a very unique way. It leans against like a little tile piece on the back of the, of the ship. And it, it works very well and effectively as a little as a little stand, which I thought was really, really cool. Yeah, that's see, it's the little things like that. Somebody's looking at these images saying, what on earth is that? Why is that there? That doesn't really fit. And like you said, it is it's a way to display. It. I thought it was for uh, the, with the ladder piece in the back, I thought it was for the the, the long carbonated brick oh. that was sub- like it's transporting it to the ship. I thought that's what was going on here. I was like, uh, I don't I don't know enough about the show, but okay, cool. <laughs> it does actually have a little uh, what is it? It's like a one by two by five brick, which is the same ones that are used in the Razor Crest. There's another one of those that does actually store in the in the ship itself. And uh, they're the same ones that you get in the Razor Crest. So you can swap those in and out, which I think is cool. I think it's like, a, I don't know the alien species, like Gargoyne. I don't, I don't know the name, <laughs> uh, but it, it's just a, it's a little sticker. You slap onto that brick and you can put that in the, in the cargo bay, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, that, 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 I think that's going to be a very appealing set. It's $50. I think it's a fair price given the exclusive minifigure you get in it. And I, I think the piece counts like close to 600 pieces. I don't know. You, you might have the details. I don't have them pulled yeah, up. Yeah. It's, of me. it's definitely one of those that is going to be, I think picked up in multiples because mm-hmm. of its price. Now, obviously if you're going to the Lego store, they might be like, Hey, no, nope, sorry. Only one per person. Or, you know, <laughs> this is, this is, these things are hot items. These are mm-hmm. the things that go on out of stock or back order for time and time again. So yeah, it's, um, I can it, see it's just, 
go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I could see people, especially scalpers, picking up like 10 of these sets <sighs> and then putting that Boba Fett on Bricklink for like $60 or something yep. stupid. Yep. <laughs> and that, you know that's the case. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. don't don't buy from scalpers. That's bad news. Mm-hmm. You will get your minifigure. You will get <laughs> your set. It's just... It, trust me. Lego uh-huh. has fixed that for the most part. <laughs> um, so I think that wraps up the Mandalorian stuff, if I'm correct. Or is, yes. Are there more? Okay. So I don't know anything about the Bad Batch, but I'm really curious to hear about these sets because they are kind of different in their own way. Yeah, so there's there's one Bad Batch set, and then the other two are Clone Wars, the, the last season of the Clone Wars show, which they, they premiered last year. Um, so the Bad Batch set is called the Bad Batch Attack Shuttle. And we've gotten a lot of attack shuttles in Star Wars over the last decade. <laughs> so nothing new sure, there. Surely did. <laughs> <laughs> um, Certainly. It's it's actually a really good set. It's $100. Uh, the set itself, the shuttle itself, I should say, is a little on the smaller side. But it also comes with two little side speeders, um, which I think one of them is like this lime green one. And it looks pretty cool, actually. It's a, it's a different speeder than we've gotten before in any other set. And I think a lot of fans will enjoy using that for mocks and stuff with uh, with Star Wars related things. Um, and then the other speeders like copy and paste from a previous Star Wars set from last year. So that's a little disappointing to see, but I can get over it. Uh, but the definitely the biggest highlight, other than the you know set itself, is the minifigures. You're actually getting the entire Bad Batch figures, which is something Lego, especially Lego Star Wars, doesn't like to do often is put all the main characters in a singular set. They like to split them up in multiple sets. And for the first time, you can actually get all of them in a single set at $100, which is pretty semi-reasonable in my opinion. I think that's going to make a lot of fans happy. Uh, But you're getting the full crew. So that's Tech, Wrecker, Hunter. uh, Who am I forgetting here? Uh, Crosshair. And then I'm forgetting... Who am I forgetting? Oh, Echo. So there's uh, there's five figures, and then you're also getting this gonk droid, which is kind of like the trash can droid, as, as fans like to call it. <laughs> there's there's a lot here, and I mm. gotta admit, I like the speeders. I, I like I like sets that come with other things. You know, you have a main vehicle and you have a side vehicle. Not so much about the display stand one we just talked about, but like these little speeders and it's lime green. So it's mm-hmm. different. And the shuttle looks really neat. Do the wings move on this thing? Yeah. So they, they do okay. just rotate. You just manually like, you know, bend okay. them. Um, there's no like, I don't know, gear function to do it. Uh, I, there is a big complaint I have about this set, which is that top fin, the top part of the set, it looks very appealing to grab the set and hold it by that. But Lego, for some reason, didn't add any type of attachment or like some type of a securing mechanism to keep that fin from opening to the interior. And so every time you grab that, it the set literally falls in half. Um, <laughs> so you have to hold it underneath the set, which... You know, when I'm explaining it, it sounds kind of dumb. Like, well, you're just holding it wrong, or why would you grab it from the top or hold it from the bottom? This is a this is a thing with the other shuttles that I had just mentioned. Lego's made a lot of these type of attack shuttles over the last decade, and all of them you could grab the top fin. And so for me, like, it's just by nature I grab it by that part, and it should just you know hold the set, but it doesn't. It just like falls, <laughs> and it's it's a little disappointing, but I it's a minor thing, I suppose it's it's um it's your muscle memory that's yes. what it is you're just so used to oh i'm gonna grab it and whoa what just happened well <laughs> maybe it was just a, an oversight or something mm-hmm. i i will say uh the the fin that you're talking about there in the middle mm-hmm. it it's not dual sided so there's studs on one side Anti-studs. and anti-studs on the other right yeah. so mm-hmm. i'm kind of, i i, I I saw the image of it and I was like, what is this? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it, it doesn't seem like something that Lego usually does. So that, that threw me off for, for a little bit. They've done that before the anti studs specifically. I think Palpatine shuttle from like 2010 did that. Um, which, you know, it kind of shows how they're still using same design techniques, ten, you know, 10, 11 years later, which is kind of funny. Uh, but I don't it doesn't it doesn't hurt me too much because the sides of the set are nice and tiled. So there's like a balance there where I think it's just probably about right. Uh, so it doesn't it doesn't get to me personally, but I could see how other fans would definitely be upset by that. 
and I'm not knocking it. I'm, mm -hmm. It's just something I'm pointing out, folks. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to receive any hate emails or messages. I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm looking at it here. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, but I. My favorite thing in this, I love the the minifig cast that you get in here with mm -hmm. the varied, different kind of coloring and different helmets and stuff. Mm -hmm. That stuff is always appealing to me. That's what the, some of the Star Wars stuff is. Why I like. You know what? I'm gonna go buy this just for the the certain figures that are in there and this one is definitely one where i'm like ooh those are super cool <laughs> there is so many uh, so all the all the almost all the bad batch figures in this set i think 3 out of the 5 use lego's pearl dark gray color which is like that almost metallic uh, gray color which i think it looks really nice but it's it's a reoccurring thing in this lego star wars wave it's like almost every Every other figure in every other set has pearl dark gray as as the main base, which is just wild. They've never used that color so much in Star Wars up until now, uh, and I think it looks really good. I think it's a nice change. I think it's going to be really refreshing for, to just Lego Star Wars fans. Um, and I, I think the figures look pretty solid. There's a, you know, I, I I get nitpicky sometimes with figures that I'm really attached to, and the Bad Batch is something I, I'm a big fan of. So there are some little details I could nitpick, but I think the overall package and what Lego's been able to do looks pretty solid. I would agree. I don't I don't have anything else to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really cool. I'm 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 very curious to uh, get my hands on this thing. So um, that's the only Bad Batch one. Mm -hmm. We you said we have a few others from the Clone Wars. So right. let's let's talk let, let's touch on a few of those. So the first one is a twenty dollars set. It's called the Duel on Mandalore. It only comes with two minifigures, an Ahsoka minifigure and a Darth Maul figure. Uh, the Darth Maul is brand new and exclusive to the set. The Ahsoka minifigure was included in a set from last year. It was uh, an AAT. It's like this blue tank vehicle. Um, and so, you know, it's a little disappointing to see not like a, another new version of a minifigure, especially at $20. And the set itself only has like 150 pieces for 200 or for $20, not $200. <laughs> um, and so it, it's only just a little like a throne with a little function behind it. The window kind of breaks. And then there's this little prison cell and it's accurate to the show, but I, it leaves something desired. I feel like the, mm -hmm. the set itself is very small. It almost feels like a, a battle pack and battle packs cost $15. And so it makes me think, you know, this set's a little overpriced, I think. Um, especially given that you're only getting one new minifigure, which is, you know, it's, it's nice to have a new Darth Maul and it's really accurate looking. And I think fans are going to want to get that figure, but the set is definitely a little less than I would like, especially when you go back and watch it's the, what it's based off of is the very final arc of the TV series. It's, it's what a lot of fans like to consider the best of Lucasfilm animation ever. Cause it's just that good. Um, it really feels like you're watching a star Wars movie in animation and, uh, it, it's something I specifically, and I know other star Wars fans are very attached to and, and cherish that. And so you really would like to have seen something bigger and more detailed come out of a duel on Mandalore type of set. You know, in my review, I, I had suggested that I wish it was actually a $30 set included a couple other figures that we haven't gotten uh, from other Clone Wars Season 7 sets. Uh, I know one that everybody wants, including myself, would be a newer, updated Captain Rex minifigure. Uh, he, he's even showed up in the Bad Batch, so there's a chance we'll get that figure later on and maybe a, a future winter wave. But, you know, the set's just okay. I don't, I don't think it's the best. Legos made these Lego star Wars has made these dual sets before the previous ones were like a Kylo versus Ray and a, a Anakin versus Obi-Wan. And those had more pieces and a bigger set for the same price. And so this kind of, eh, it's just okay. It's ne not nearly as good as those others. Well, you had mentioned about, you know, this, this being should have, or could have been easily more of like a battle pack. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, I don't disagree there at all. My thing is, you had already mentioned this. Amazon likes to deep discount these. Oh, I yeah. say deep discount, pop twenty percent off fairly quickly, and you could easily get this at around that price. I'm more on the side of you, you wanting it to be at that thirty dollar price point. Add a little bit more to it, or you know, even beyond that. I know they have their sets so that they have their certain price brackets at, mm -hmm. but definitely pushing it up another $10, adding a little bit more to it, I think it would do a little bit better to help it sell. Now, obviously, you had said 
we have Darth Maul exclusive here to this. So th- that's going to be a draw. So it's nice to be able to pull that, like we had just discussed about getting more unique figures on a lower price point. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's going to leave some people wondering like, well, what else, what else could have been? And exactly. maybe in the future, there's something that they could go back and revisit. And you know mm-hmm. what? Hey, we're going to do something a little bit bigger. Exactly. Yeah. I definitely hope that for sure. Uh, so that kind of leads into the final set, which is also Clone Wars Season 7 based and definitely a set I think a lot of people are going to buy day one. It is so good. The figures are fantastic. It's called the Mandalorian Starfighter, and it actually shows up in the Mandalorian show. So it actually has dual purpose. It's a Clone Wars set from Season 7, but it's also in the Mandalorian show. So, you know, whether you're a fan of one or the other or a fan of both, it's it's appealing to a, a bigger audience to of, of people. And, you know, the ship itself is really cool looking. It's like this blue, like fang fighter type of thing. And it looks, it just looks so different than the rest of Star Wars ships usually do. And uh, I absolutely love the the colors that they use, the dark blue, the regular blue grays and stuff thrown in. And it's got a really nice contrast to it. But what's really awesome is the minifigures. Again, the continuing trend, this (laughs) wave of exclusive new minifigures this one has three brand new minifigures that are only in this set uh the first one is bo katan she is a awesome mandalorian bounty not a bounty hunter she's like a a mandalorian warrior who leaves her people and stuff and and both both shows actually uh then you're getting gar saxon which shows up in the clone wars show he's like this darth maul loyalist mandalorian he looks awesome he's got this red looking armor he's got these uh, this brand new spiked helmet mold which looks really cool uh he's got this yellow visor it's just like such a stark contrast on that figure as well absolutely love it and then you're getting this uh mandalorian loyalist someone who follows bo katan uh who's a very awesome looking figure as well all three figures look amazing. I was, it's probably, if there's a set to get out of the Lego Star Wars wave this summer, this is the set I would recommend because it's coming in at $60. Uh, I don't know the piece count off the top of my head, but I think it's just around 600 pieces. And then you're getting these three new minifigures that are only in the set. And then on top of that, it's a set that you you see the ship actually in multiples in a lot of different scenes. And so there's also the appeal of buying more than just one. So it just, for me, this is like, one of the best sets of the wave. Yeah. You had mentioned it's just about 600 pieces that $60 price point. You get some really unique minifigs, which again, the star Wars minifigs to me, it, the line of star Wars minifigs is just, it's some of the best minifigs that are out there, especially from the Mandalorian. So the, the, the ship itself, the colors, the color palette is really what is kind of sold this thing to me. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really smitten by this one. And you said, (laughs) Hey, this is one that, this is probably the one you should get. This is, this is one that is like, (gasps) (gasps) I kind of need it. Kind of, I'm I'm really interested to see what this thing looks like in the flesh. Absolutely. It's, it's a really cool vehicle. And it also has the play functions of how it works is like the wings spin around the cockpit and and it actually, the cockpit itself spins 360 degrees. So it's, it's a very unique ship in terms of its geometry and how it actually functions. So there's also that aspect too of, of, of play. Um, So I, I, I really like that as well. It's definitely probably one of my favorites. There's also a seventh set in this wave. It hasn't been, I guess officially announced, but it's in the back of the instruction booklets that Lego sent over. So I can kind of talk about it. It's, it's just called the Mandalorian forge. Um, that'll come out later this year. It's not, it's part of this wave, but I think it was like maybe like a COVID delay is why it's being pushed back Mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, but that's another Mandalorian set as well. Again, continuing the trend of Mandalorian and clone wars and bad batch, you know, it's all television show sets. And so if you've been watching Disney plus, Star Wars stuff, then this this is going to be an appealing wave to you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, even if you, especially, most especially if you have been watching Mandalorian, all of these, well, not all of these, a majority of these sets, I think Bad Batch is the only one that is currently available. The rest are coming August 1st, for those of you that are curious, like, when's it coming? When's it coming? <laughs> August 1st. You have to wait till August 1st. I know mm-hmm. everything is hitting here in the United States on August 1st. Everything, it seems like. There is one set that will come out September 1st, which is the Darth Vader Meditation Chamber. It's kind of like a side summer set. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I was kind of talking about it a little bit earlier. That's a really neat set. It's an 18 plus adult set. 
Uh, it'll definitely make you know older fans or really just any Star Wars fan happy because it's it's Darth Vader's meditation chamber that you see in Empire Strikes Back. It's that pod that opens up and you know he talks to the <laughs> the admirals and you know he, he does the force choking and stuff like that. So it's a very iconic Star Wars scene that I feel like a lot of people will recognize. The old school Star Wars folks will be going gaga for it is what i am guessing <laughs> there's i guess there's three generations of star wars fans now there's the fans who grew up with the original trilogy there's fans mm-hmm. who grew up with the prequel trilogy and now there's fans who grew up with the sequel trilogy and so you're going to have these three different generations and going forward you know i know there's a lot of people that like to speculate that lego star wars will end highly highly doubt it it's been going 21 <laughs> years already I, I don't see it ever ending honestly as long as as Disney keeps on pumping out more Star Wars stuff. They're going to keep that license going. Um, so I, I, I could foresee, you know, five, 10 years from now, you know, kids who saw like the force awakens that came out in 2015, those kids who were 10 then when, you know, it's 2025 or 2030, they're going to be in their twenties and thirties and wanting more detailed sets and, and such like that. So you, you'll see like this, this shift as we go forward in the, in the years to come of like, how there'll be sequel fans and prequel fans and original trilogy fans. It's just, it's so interesting. <laughs> I'm a fan of it all. I love all of it, right. but um, you definitely see like people who, who gravitate to what they grew up with. You know, it's that nostalgia feeling. Yeah. You definitely see that not just with star Wars, you definitely see that with a lot of other things, but mm-hmm. star Wars in specific, you really notice it <laughs> where uh, I'm only buying stuff from the original movies. That, that's it. That, that that's all I want. Mm-hmm. I want the death star. I want the, and then you see some of the others that trickle out, but I, you bring up an interesting point, you know, kids that were 10 when the force awakens came out and you know, they're going to be in twenties, thirties, whatever down the road it really changes things. And as far as Lego creating sets based off of the content, Disney has no desire to end the the content anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And at the new content anyway, but at the other end of the spectrum, you have Lego. It's like, Oh, well we can, we can make another X wing. And I know people are going to grumble and complain and moan and, they'll still buy it. Absolutely. <laughs> That's Absolutely. the way the Star Wars fan base works. <laughs> Especially if you put a new minifigure in there. That's all it takes. <laughs> it doesn't even have to be new. It, it, it could be just mildly updated. And, yeah. You know, have a slightly different print. Like, can you believe this? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, David, I have had a blast chatting with you, yeah, uh, having you on the show. You guys uh, make sure you go check David out. Uh, tell us where or yeah, you tell us where they can find you, sir. Yeah, you can uh, you can find me on YouTube. That's that's probably what I'm most known for. Is my YouTube channel is called Solid Brick Studios. Brick spelled B-R-I-X. Um, you can go to YouTube.com/slash Solid Brick Studios, or you could just like search it in the search bar. I feel like that's what most people do. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, I guess as well. Also, just look up Solid Bricks, and and that'll come up as mm-hmm. well. Uh, but yeah, I'm a, a big Lego Star Wars fan. But I I do. Uh, especially in the last two years, I have started covering like the adult stuff, uh, the adult Lego sets. And um, I just reviewed like the typewriter, for example. I know that's a set you were excited about recently. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I'm also dipping my fingers in like all the other stuff that Lego offers. And honestly, it's all great. So you're walking down that dangerous road where you step outside of one theme and into multiples. And then before you know it, you, you I have no more room. <laughs> I, I, I stepped, I, I, I got the modular bug i guess and <laughs> oh no oh no <laughs> I, I i may have spent the, the 450 dollars to get a sealed brick bank i don't know man <laughs> hey you know what we all have our, our vices out there so <laughs> yours is just trickling into the other realm now so oh yeah uh yeah make sure you guys go check him out give him a follow subscribe on um his youtube channels social medias uh again david thank you for coming on sir and yeah. uh it was a blast and we'll have you back in the future thanks for having me Well, that'll wrap up this lovely Star Wars related episode into, you know, put a little pretty bright black and white Star Wars bow on top of it and call it a day. Great discussion with David. First time on the show won't be the last, I promise. Hopefully you guys took away some valuable information and gleaned some new things from this wave of Star Wars sets that are coming out some that are already out, and some that will be coming even further down the line. So until we meet again, 
I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's bet on it.